Football club FCSB are one of the biggest clubs in Romanian footballing history, but they were only founded in 2003. And that is because formerly they were known as FC Stau Bucuresti, who actually won a Champions League trophy in 1986. But in 2003, football club FCSB was formed as a second club. So they do not have any of the history of the previous. So we are looking to get a Champions League 2 football club FCSB and win the title for the first time in nine years. So grab yourself some popcorn because of course this is a Moneyball rebuild. Now as we can see this club was only formed in 2003 but they were at the very top of their game and it's all very very interesting when you look into the history of FCSB and FC Stal Bucharesti. We're not going to be going too much into it today but if you do want to read up on it Wikipedia I have read through the whole thing. Very very interesting. Uh, in 2003 this brand new club was formed and FC Stal Bucharesti have all the rights to the honours of previous to that. So technically football club FCSB SSB do not have a Champions League trophy to their name, which is what we're looking to do today with this fantastic club. Now, we do set up in the standard 4 2 3 1 formation that we always set up in, but there is lots of things to get into here in Romania, which are going to make this rebuild even more difficult than I ever imagined. So, first of all, the transfer values of the players. No one's worth a single thing. They're up max value of three million pounds. And that is our best player by quite far, Dennis Oloru. He actually looks like a fantastic central midfielder. Extremely consistent. Very good on big matches. Great determination, pace, stamina, natural fitness. Worth 2.2 million pounds. And if this is our best player now... Um, for £2 million, we're going to very much struggle in this Moneyball rebuild. So I'm going to say this straight off the bat, very similar to how the Serbian rebuild went with Partizan, which if you haven't watched, was absolutely fantastic. Us being in a net negative in terms of money spent is going to be extremely, extremely difficult because signing players in Moneyball, we are doing it in the exact same way we normally do. Signing players are very cheap, but selling players is going to be extremely difficult for a big value. I'm still going to sell players. I'm still going to do that, but I'm going to have to do it on the proviso that you guys understand that me selling someone for four million pounds here is pretty much the same as me selling them for 15 at 20 million pounds in a better reputation league sadly it's just the way that it's sort of coded in football manager even the team that gets the champions league and the quarterfinals etc their transfer value does not go up in the slightest but that is a long way away because in the romanian first division we have not won it in quite some time crf Cluj went on a dominating spree between 2018 and 2022 farrell constantinia won it in 2023 and you can see pretty much this whole time we were runners up the last time we won it was in 2004 14-15. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a difficult, difficult challenge to even overtake the top teams. In terms of season preview, we are predicted to come down in second. In real life right now, FCFCB are dominating the league and are looking like they're going to absolutely smash the remaining league. So, hopefully, in this first season, we can do the same thing. The best thing here as well is the unbelievable youth recruitment and youth academy. Four and a half star in youth recruitment. Three and a half star youth facilities. Three and a half star training facilities. So, similar again two partisan when the kids come through the academy is going to be absolutely vital to first of all getting some money through the door and second of all building a very good side there is a few standout players that we have to talk about from the very off number one being octavian popescu he has got seven caps for romania at 20 years of age some very decently well-rounded stats with five star potential alexandru pantea a 19 year old romanian again with five star potential already a cap for Romania, very good on his right foot, but can also play on his left foot, which means he can also play at left back as well, which is incredibly exciting. Them two are the standout wonder kids here at the club to kick things off. But let's get into season one, where hopefully we can lift the Romanian trophy for the first time in 2015 with FC FCSB. So last season, FCSB finished in second place in the Romania division, which means they go into the second qualifying round for the UEFA Europa conference league so you can see what a big journey this is going to be in the second round we beat beltar jerusalem 6-1 in the third round we beat kalmar ff 7-3 on aggregate and finally in the fourth qualifying round we played up against lj and won 7-4 on aggregate which means we go into the group stages of the UEFA conference league and obviously we are starting this in the 23-24 season so we can get a full money ball transfer season in for the 24-25 and so on and so forth so we're going in to group f and we've drawn up against Lille. 
Well, we would show we were going to be no pushover in this group whatsoever. Playing against Leo in the first game, we go 1-0 up thanks to a fantastic finish from the edge of the box. They're going to score, but it's due to an own goal from Octavian Popescu in the central defence midfield position. But in the 91st minute, a corner falls through to Haynolds. And we beat Lille in the first game in the group stages here in the Conference League. Could we go on to win the group? Yes, we can. 15 points, 6 games, 5 wins and 1 loss. And that loss was the last game in the group stage against Lille, uh, Lille where we lost 2-0. But we beat Athletic Bambolonia and FK Partizani in both games. Meaning we were actually quite a strong side and better than I expected. And well, in the round of 16, we faced up against Club Bruges and we won 6-3 on aggregate. Meaning in our first season here at FCSB, we were going to the quarterfinals in the Europa Conference League. Decent showing to kick things off. But this is where it all come tumbling down. Against Fiorentina, we lost 9-5 on aggregate. Now we scored five goals against a very good Serie A side. But I can see did nine. So maybe defensively we had some work to do. But I'm still very impressed. First season, quarterfinals of European competition. Now, obviously, this is the worst one by quite some distance. We've got the Europa League and the Champions League. It might be the first rebuild. We have a potential of winning all three in one video, which would be exciting. But how do we get on in the actual league? Well, in the overall actual league table, we were the best team over the whole league. But here in Romania, you split up into a champion playoff and a relegation group, and we bottled it. And the fourth place team, University of Craiovia, on 50 points, beat us by two points, and we did not win the Romanian title. Even though we're the best team over the whole, the whole season, we don't win it, which just feels wrong. But fair enough, I suppose. They're the rules, and uh, we are in second place, which means we do get the Europa Conference League again next season, which is very, very frustrating. Fourth place, Herman Stat got Europa League, which is because they won the Romanian Cup ahead of us. We're actually, we got knocked out, I believe, in the group stage of this one, which was an absolute stinker. So, an absolute poor first season in terms of domestically. European, very impressed. Domestically, very, very disappointed. But, you know, it means we've certainly got some way to go. And we have got a long way to go in terms of becoming the dominant side here in Romania. Because by the end of this rebuild, I'm hoping that is exactly what we can do. Currently, in terms of the competition rep reputation down here as well, we are 28th in the world. So, again, we're looking to build the Romanian division up to, say, top 15. So, hopefully, more clubs can get into Europe. And if we perform better in Europe, that is exactly what will happen. So, it's going to come down to pretty much us and University of Cracovia. In terms of this first season, we had some standout performers, and they were Alexandra Baluta. He is 29 years of age, turning 30 midway through this season. 21 goals and 8 assists. Brilliant season with David Mikliescu in just 20 starts. 20 goals and 3 assists. Florian Coman, 16 and 7. Luis Philippe, 15 and 8. Darius Olaru, 12 and 16. Risto Radunjevic from left back, 10 goals and 19 assists. And there's even a name here that you will recognize from the Spurs days. Vlad Shirishez, 9 goals and an assist. And we also had a breakout superstar, Mihai Toma. Two-star ability, five-star potential. This season, averaged over a seven rating eight goals and 10 assists. So as someone to certainly keep our eyes on. In terms of the development center, our first youth intake was very decent indeed. We got ourselves Antonio Jorge, Margaret Chechu, and Paul Asmar. But Antonio Jorge is the man that I am excited for instantly because he is extremely consistent. He can play up front, but because of his pace, I think this guy as a central attack midfielder, getting him in there, using the ball, dribbling around players, finishing is very decent as well. And he's just 15. We might have stumbled across a complete and utter superstar in the first season, in our first preview. Now, in terms of finances here at FCSB, things are decent. We have eight and a half million pounds in our overall balance. And again, as we go up through the leagues and up through the Champions League, etc., that will rise ahead of a lot. In terms of debts and loans, absolutely nothing on the club, which is beautiful because it means that we are running on pure profit. We have £5 million to spend this summer and £20,000 in wage budget. So who can we bring in? Well, first of all, our superstar goalkeeper, Stefan Taraniovu, left the club for £1.4 
to FC Norwich's land. And that's exactly what I mean based on the transfer values of us selling players. This guy should be 8, 9, 10 million pounds. But just because of the league reputation, it's massively lower. So again, try and ignore that as much as you can. But 1.5 million pounds raised here, as well as 1.5 million raised for a very average right back, in my opinion. We sold him to FC Hermannstadt. I don't quite know how we got this money for him. He's 19 years of age. He's incredibly inconsistent. And I feel like we absolutely robbed him. And finally, we did sell our top goal scorer, Alexandru Bal Lucia, two rounders. He did score 20 goals last season, but I don't think he's going to be quite good enough. And he's 30 years of age. So if we are going to get any money for him, which at this point was only £900,000, this was the time to sell him. And hopefully we can bring in a superstar replacement. Well, that was actually incredibly difficult because there wasn't any players interested and there wasn't a lot on the market. So we had to resort to a free agent signing that we have used a couple of times. And that is Yassine Fortune. This guy has been released from Policia. He is Algerian. He is a fantastic striker with great pace, composure and finishing, but is only a two two and a half star player. So I'm actually not even sure if he's going to be leading the line this season, but he's our replacement for our 20 goal a season striker. We also had to replace our goalkeeper. So I brought in Stanislav Akstaev from Krasnodar in Russia. We signed him for 3.9 million pounds, which yes, is quite expensive, but this guy's value is actually fairly reasonable. Seven to 8.8 .8 million pounds, extremely consistent and loves big matches. I think this guy could be our keeper for the rest of this rebuild. He genuinely could become a Champions League winning keeper. Alexey Pejic comes in as our brand new central defensive midfielder from TSC over in Serbia. He is a Serbian international with great aggression and ball playing ability in that central midfielder, midfielder role. And of course, loves big matches and is consistent. And of course, as well as every single signing is going to be in this Moneyball rebuild, averaged over a seven last season and even got himself 10 assists. Klaus Niakuri comes in from Harsgaard over in Norway. He is a 24-year-old centre-back brought in to pretty much be a rotation option, but again, consistent and likes big matches. And finally, our starting centre-back is Peter Reindhausen signed from Sartsbord. Again, Norwegian. We hence tend to sign a lot of Norwegians during Moneyball because they often perform very, very well. He is consistent, very good speed, very good ball-playing ability as a centre-back as well, which excites me a hell of a lot. And it does mean our team is looking rather are quite strong. Akastiev in goal, Pantea, Reinhardsen, Ingazemia at centre back with Radunjevic at left back, Suit and Pejic at CDM with Denis Solaru, Luis Felipe, and Kaman as the three in behind Milescu. And Milescu was very good last season. He played off the wing and scored 20 goals in 20 starts. So we're going to be giving him the starting berth up front simply because we couldn't find a striker that was good enough, which is a little bit risky, but it does mean our backups are Maxim, Antwi, Niakuri, Vlachirashez, Padliaru, Radislavski, Alexandru, David Popper, Mihai Toma, Octavian Popescu, and Yassine Fortuna. Now, the difficulty here with Octavian Popescu and Mihai Toma really is the fact that our wingers are very strong. Coman and Alaru are incredibly, incredibly good, and them two might come a little bit unstuck trying to compete with them players, so we shall see how they get on. Another thing to certainly mention here in Romania is there is a cap on non-EU players and we are at that cap right now. A maximum of four in the entire squad. So often we go out to Argentina, to Brazil, to Ecuador and sign some incredible wonder kids that are smashing it over in their leagues at over a seven average rating. They're 19 years of age and they cost us a million quid. That's not going to happen here. That cannot happen in Romania. Only four are allowed. So we're going to have to go to the likes of Norway, to the likes of Croatia, to Serbia, to, to England, to France, the lower leagues around there, and see if we can find players that are going to be good enough. And it just adds another difficulty to this rebuild. How long do you think it is going to take us? Do not cheat and look at the chapters. How long do you think it's going to take us to get to the end of this rebuild? Where are we going to finish this rebuild with FCSB winning the Champions League because it does not end until that point, which is a long way down the line because we're not even predicted favourites in the Romanian division yet. We are actually down to fourth with the sales and purchases we have made behind Cluj, Universita Cronovia and FC Rapid. So there's a long our way to go. Now again, this season we are in the Conference League, so hopefully we can add it to our trophy tally. And well, first of all, I want to touch on a trophy that we have gone and secured. It is the Romanian Cup. Up. And first of all, a goal from Florian Kaman. And the second goal is going to come from the 15-year-old that we have just got from our youth academy. It is 
Giorge. He comes into the team straight away. He scores to make it 2-0 against UTA Arad. And we win the Romanian Cup. And Antonio Giorge gets his first goal in a final for FCSB. Is that going to be the first of many down the line? And when we absolutely smashed through the qualification rounds in the Conference League. And we smashed the league phase as well. Six games played. Five wins against St. Gallen, Panathinaikos, Maccabi Tel Aviv, HJK, and Vashaksha here, and a draw against AIK. We were top of the league phase of the Europa Conference League. There is some very good sides here, but we are on top. And it does mean we go straight into the round of 16. We faced up against Ammonia and beat them 7-4 on aggregate. And one of the quarterfinals, we placed up against Vashaksha here and beat them on penalties. Now, this was a game we won in the league phase. And luckily, we managed to draw both games and win on penalties 7-6, coming down right to the wire and get ourselves into the semi-finals. We were facing up against Atalanta. Where, well, in just one minute away from home in Italy, we got off to a fantastic start after Coman got us 1-0 up. It's not the Kingsley Coman, it's Florian Coman. And he gets us a goal up early on. And we are going to go two up as well because Engenzia smashes it against the post. It drops to Alexandru. He makes it 2-0. How does 3-0 sound in 16 minutes? Well, Jorge, the 15-year-old, yeah, he's here against Atalanta scoring to make it 3-0. Now, we are going to become a little bit of a collapse here. Skamaka scores to make it 3-1 in the 46th minute. And in the 55th, they are going to make it 3-2. But this was it. And we were leads against Atlanta, Atalanta going into the second game. We're at home. As long as we didn't lose, we were winners. And Alara got off to a great start in 15 minutes of a fantastic free kick before a bit of a defensive mistake made it 1-1. But that was that and fcsb were going to the final of the europa conference league after knocking out atalanta and it was fc copenhagen we were facing the team we won the champions league with in denmark well here it is in the europa conference league and luis felipe makes it one nil in 33 minutes copenhagen are gonna grab a goal back elianusi finding cornelius he puts it park agastif and it takes us to the second half of extra time where i cannot write this antonio Giorgi. The 15-year-old scores at the front post to make FCSB Europa Conference League winners in season number two. A simply fantastic game. You can tell from the stats. It was an absolute ding-dong battle. 45 shots overall. 57% possession to us. And Antonio Giorgi. He's just turned 16 years of age. This season scored four goals. That's it. Four assists, four goals. We have just seen three of them. One against Atlanta to win the tie. One in a Romanian Cup final to make us a two-goal lead. And one in the final of a Europa Conference League to lift it for his hometown club. Now, this guy might go on to be an absolute hero and a superstar. But what a start it has been for him. Antonio Jorge, I am very, very excited for what he can do for this club. And while we had that success in Europe and in the Romanian Cup, sadly, it wasn't meant to be here in the league again. We actually come third overall in terms of the massive league. Uh, we're still qualifying for the Europa League, obviously, because we won the Romanian Cup and the Conference League. But in terms of the actual league itself in the Champions Playoff, we come second, seven points away from CFL Cluj. So there really is some decent teams here in Romania, and it's not going to be quite as easy as we maybe hoped it would be. And that's because, really, the squad is just not quite as good as some others. Our striker this season ended up playing a lot of games was Yassine Fortune. He scored 26 goals and got 6 assists, which, yes, is very good. But looking at his stats, he's fairly average, and we certainly need someone to come in and take the reins from him. Florial Coman, again, simply fantastic. 21 goals and 9 assists. Darius Alaru, 13 and 12. Luis Felipe, 13 and 9. And David Minescu, 11 and 9. Antonio Jorge, as mentioned, 4 and 4. Alexandra Pantea, the youngster we mentioned at the start, 4 goals and 10 assists. A fantastic start to his career. We tried to get Alexandra Misu and Octavian Popescu more game time, but simply didn't quite work out, and neither of them are really progressing as hoped. So maybe are not quite going to be the players we thought they were. And overall, it means they might need to be replaced. We do have £10 million in the transfer budget, £30,000 in the wage budget. So we have got a little bit of money to play with. And of course, we are next season in the Europa League. So that is going to now start a massive tumble of money. 
technically, if you're a West Ham fan, we're champions of Europe in season two. But we are going to be going for, you know, the big one, the Champions League. But we've ticked one off already. It'll be very interesting to see if this is the first time we win the Conference League, Europa League and Champions League in a rebuild. Do you think it will happen? Let me know down below. Let's get into the silence of season three. Well, first of all, a sale to a big club in France. Mihai Toma, the first season superstar, has left for three and a half million pounds simply as soon as the club come in from France for one of our players, especially a wonder kid they're going to want to leave. So we have to say goodbye to Mihai. And also, Octavian Popescu, also going to France to SM Khan, left for just over £1 million. Sadly, I've not managed to get the best out of him. This guy looks like a supreme talent in real life. And maybe it's a bit of a downfall on my part, not making Octavian one of the best players here at FCSB. But we're here to move on and bring in some better players. The first of all is a free agent signing released from Spartak in Serbia. A 24-year-old Serbian international is Luka Bielovic. This guy's got great anticipation and natural fitness. Can play as a playmaker on the right, but we're going to be using him as an inside forward and also is extremely consistent. Viktor Radonjevic comes in as a left back. The Serbian player looks fantastic. 20 years of age with some very decent potential signed from Severnia Savestia. Yaroslav Gladyashev is a Russian signed from Dynamo Moscow. Again, a player that looks very, very good. Very well-rounded. He is consistent. He doesn't like big matches, which does worry me but hopefully he can be very good a big Norwegian center back has also joined in Sondra Langas signed from Viking over in Norway this guy looks fantastic six for two with some very good speed and very good defensive stats already last season a 6.97 at Viking season for that a 6.95 so he's becoming a very good player and I'm excited to see what Sondra can do and finally the striker I have been crying out for Luca Halonda comes in from International over in Brazil, 22 years of age. He's a leading first league player already and has great finishing, great composure, great pace. Six foot tall, so can hold himself as well. And is already a leading player, could become a star player. Now, at this point in the rebuild, when I was doing it in real time, I wasn't quite aware of the, the four non-EU player slots. So we were signing a lot of non-EU players without having much knowledge of it at all. So that is going to come back to buy us in a couple of seasons time. But as things stand, Agastiev starts in goal with Pantea, Reinhardson, Langas and Radiovic as our back four. Adrian Su and Alexa Pejic in DM with Bailovic, Olaru, Coman and Luka Holanda up front. The team does look very, very strong, but it's where the backups come in, which is where I'm very, very impressed. We've got the likes of George, Mikulescu, Alexandru all coming through the academy. Yasin Fortuna, Misu, Luis Felipe, Gladyashev as the backup three to the strikers. Sandu and Stankovi, Padrianu, Ngenzia, Nikiaru, Dimitrika and Giorgi Jivan, who is a new goalkeeper that has come through the academy. And I thought, you know what? Let's trust the 15-year-old and see if he can be a good back up to Agastev. Like I think Agastev could be the keeper for years to come. So we do not need a superstar there. But Gabriel could overtake him at some point in this rebuild. So a very strong team, a very young team. And we are building that FCSB core to being very, very strong. This season, I want to finally win the Romanian Super League. We are predicting second just behind on to CFR Cluj. The league has already started. Well, the Super Cup has already started anyway. And we did beat Cluj 4-1 in that game. So hopefully we can win the league. Well, sadly, we're going to have one of the worst returns into the Romanian Cup where we come third in Group C and CFR Cluj and Polisinia Lassi beat us on goal difference. So, sadly, we're not listening this one back to back. In the Europa League, however, I'm actually very, very impressed. We managed to come 13th in the league table. Four wins against Rakau, a 5-2 against Valencia, beating a Bernie and Antoni Svestia, drawing to RB Leipzig, who we finished just one point behind and losing to Fenerbahce Chase Sporting and somehow Crystal Palace are here. We were only two points behind Newcastle as well, and actually two points or three points, regardless of goal difference, away from getting top eight. But it does mean we're in the knockout playoff round. We're in the first leg against Rakao. We won 1 0 away from home. So we had to bring it back to the FCSB Stadium, where if we were going to go through, we had to beat them. Well, just not lose, to be honest. And it was 1 0 pretty quickly in this game before the 85th minute. 
for some reason, the goal started to fly. And it's our first look at Luca Halanda bearing down on goal with a fantastic finish. He looks very big in the Max engine. And uh, Gladiafiv found Pejic at the front post to make it 3-1. And we did beat Rakow 4-1 on aggregate, which meant we were into the round of 16. We're in the first leg at home against Olympic Marseille. We go 1-0 down thanks to a goal from Gigo, but we are going to get a goal back. Coman finds suits of a great ball through to Believich to put it past Pau Lopez to make it 1-1. Sadly, the home leg does end in a 2-1 loss. We knew we had to go to the Stade de Marseille in order to go through to the quarterfinals. Well, we do go 1-0 up and it takes until the 86th minute for Marseille to get a goal. A ball bouncing around in the box. And sadly, we draw 1-1, which means lose 3 to an aggregate. But in my opinion, against a very strong side in Olympic Marseille. And you would have seen someone there that actually ended up playing that game. Gabriel Givan had to play that game due to injuries to Agasteyev. And he actually played 11 games over the whole season, only conceding 14 goals as someone that was 15, turning 16 in the midway point of the season. I think that's pretty impressive. And when it was so impressive, the overall for the whole season, we got 76 points, 24 wins, four draws and two losses. And you can see, thanks to the C next to our name, we ended up finally lifting the trophy here in Romania's, which is unbelievable. FCSB back to being champions for the first time since 2015, which means it's an 11 year wait, FCSB fans. But in real life, it looks like it's not going to be that as you're going to win it this season, which is absolutely fantastic. But I'm absolutely buzzing. We've finally lifted the trophy. In terms of the competition reputation, we're up to 20 seconds. So we are certainly rising. In terms of this season, assist-wise, Ryan Hansen and Florian Kaman in the top two. Clean sheet, Stanislav Agasteyev in second. An average rating, Denis Alaru, Peter Reinsarsen and Florian El Coman all in the top three. Still no striker in that sort of top goal scoring position, even though Luke Orlando scored 25 goals and got four assists in 47 games. Coman, 18 and 16. And Luka Belijevic, the free agent signing, 10 goals and three assists. Ryan Hansen, 17 assists, was absolutely fantastic. And this season, Antonio Giorgi has gone up to a three-star ability player with eight goals and nine assists. And it's progressing incredibly, incredibly well. And I genuinely think we have a superstar on our hands. And sort of what happened at the end of the point of that this that season with our goalkeeper being injured, Stanislav Agasteyev, he is now a four and a half star ability player. He is wanted by Lille, FC Bayern Munich, Al Fateh and Norwich. So I think it's going to be difficult to keep hold of him. But I think we're going to give Gabriel Javan the starting position in goal next season on 20 quid a week. Yes, it's mental, but we're going to trust him and hopefully it doesn't backfire. That's if Agasteyev leaves. We have got £9 million in the bank, 30k in wage budget and the finances are looking incredibly strong. Let's get in to season four. Well, as guessed, our superstar goalkeeper has left the club, but it was actually to Norwich he left to for £7 million in the end. Fantastic signing for us. I mean, absolutely brilliant. £3.9 million overall signed for. Gone for £6 million. He is now a Premier League goalkeeper with Norwich. There's a value of £23 million. So you can see exactly what I mean. But the value not quite being fair. He is incredible. And if you're looking for a young goalkeeper on your stave, Stanislav Agasteyev from Krasnodar could be your guy. We also ended up selling Alexia Pejic to Spain. Levante coming for him. And he went for £2.9 million. So overall, quite a lot of money raised this summer. And that wasn't the end because our best player over the last few seasons, Darius Olaru, has also left the club. He has gone to Lazio, which is a very big move for him. £5.5 million overall we sold him for. And he made four appearances um, over there, which, you know, is a little bit disappointing that he has gone. But we'll move on. Hopefully, we'll be okay. But Darius is going to be a big old miss. And allowed us to bring in three very good players. Number one, Stefan Lekovic comes in, a Serbian 22-year-old sign from Savernia Savestia. They produce a lot of good players. Consistent, likes big matches, a very, very good centre-back indeed. In terms of his history, last season, 27 appearances, a 7.15. He is going to be fantastic. Caden Clark comes in from Minnesota. Signing someone from the MLS is not something I normally would do. But this guy cost us just three and a half million pounds. And it's very, very exciting. Great determination. Great speed. Can play on either wing or in the cam roll. And seems like quite a fun little thing. Bringing over an American project from Minnesota to come in to this team 
in Romania and become a superstar. And finally, we did breed a brand new central defense midfielder. So I guess we have gone over to Serbia, but this time to Partizan, and he was fantastic in that rebuild. Matija Stejpanovic has come in, extremely consistent, a very well-rounded central defense midfielder. And in terms of our actual first team, he does come in along with Jivan in goal. It's a big risk but it's one I'm willing to take. Pantea at right back, Radonjevic at left back, Langas and Lekovic in centre back. Stejpanovic, Radovescu, Beljevic, Caden Clark, Coman and Luka Halanda as our first team. And you can see we've actually already started the season. Again, we won the Romanian Super Cup, which is brilliant. But actually in the Romanian First Division, we have played two games already. A seven goal difference, six points. We won 5-1 against Gloria Bazunu and 3-0 against Hotel Galataria, where Jivan played both goals and conceded just one. So a brilliant start for him and a brilliant start for us. Can we retain the Romanian title? Well, we are going to get ourselves back into the Romanian Cup final, but are we going to manage to win it? Well, first of all, Caden Clark gets us off to a great start in just 12 minutes before a little bit of a defensive error. All the way in the 86th minute comes in and they get a ball into the back post, in off the post, and it's 1-1 in the 86th minute. But believe it or not, that was not it for 90 minutes. Luis Felipe finds Mikliescu to sign in Genzia to find Yassin Fortune 2-1 in the 91st minute. Surely it's done. Well, here we are in the 95th minute for Nigru to find Mihai to find Vergani. And it's 2-2. We're going to extra time. 112 minutes in. Soot finds Lekovic. Finds Soot. Soot had a great pearling finish into the back of the net. It's 3-2. And we do lift the Romanian Cup again. And we also managed to go and win the league for the first time back to back since 2015. A fantastic season. 74 points, a 61 goal difference. Very clear in terms of goals. Just one point overall in terms of the goal difference. As we check out the Champions Playoff, 54 points, five points clear of Cluj. But the most thing that excites me is how much the league has improved. 16th now in terms of competition in just four seasons. We have got ourselves now five teams from Romania getting in to either we've got two in the Champions League, us and Cluj, one in the Europa League with Feral Constania and two into the Europa Conference League. So straight away, we've done absolute wonders for the Romanian League. First of all, in terms of goals, a very surprising person here in joint second effectively is Yaroslav Gladyashev, a signing a few years ago, 17 goals. Luka Halanda, top of the average ratings with 7.49 with Luka Believich on a 7.33. As this wise, Believich 15, Florian Kaban 13 and yellow cards. We love to see that. A little bit of fight and passion. But how do we get on in the Champions League? Well, we scraped through the league phase. I mean, I'm quite impressed we've even managed to do that, to be honest. Eight games played, two wins, a 6-1 against Young Boys and a 3-1 against Galatasaray. Two draws against Lons and Atalanta. Obviously, a team we have beat previously. And four losses, 4-1 four against Inter Milan, 2-1 against Bayern Munich. 4-1 against Manchester City and 1-0 against Barcelona. So we've played up against some absolutely massive teams and we, you know, sort of held our own. You know, we, we didn't get battered 6 or 7-0. Only a negative one in terms of goal difference and we are in to the knockout playoff round. And we faced up against Red Bull Salzburg. We're in the 86th minute. We go 1-0 up thanks to Caden Clark, the American dream. Well, maybe it was a good signing after all. A very good finish. And we are one up against Salzburg heading away from home. But we held on up until the 86th minute where they did score to make things 1-1 thanks to a screamer from blank. And the thing that makes it even worse, that in the 94th minute, they're going to make it 2-1. We held on for so long. But sadly, we're knocked out in the knockout playoff round. So overall, look at the competition screen. A fairly decent season winning the Romanian League, winning everything domestically. I wish we'd have done better in the Champions League. Getting the knockout playoff round against Salzburg. I'd have semi-expected us to win that one. So it feels like a little bit of a bottle. But I tell you what, we are progressing well. And we're actually progressing the whole league well, which is something we've not really managed to do very often, to be honest, which is great to see. In terms of the squad, in terms of the goals, in terms of our superstar players, Florian Kaman again, smashing it. 46 goal contributions overall. Yaroslav Gladyashev actually became a very good player in the end this season. 24 and 12. Luka Believich, 17 and 19. Caden Clark, 16 and 11. And Antonio Jorge, still only 18 years of age. 11 and 3. Incredibly impressive. Peter Rylanson, also fantastic. Anyone else doing absolute bits? I'm not 100% sure. In terms of our goalkeeper, Gabriel Jivan. 
54 games, a 6.95. Now, his ability hasn't grown in terms of his stars, but I think he has grown as a player. And as a 6.95, a 17-year-old goalkeeper, I think it's a project potentially worth sticking with. And the big thing that has changed this summer is the money. £40 million. Pounds. That's quite some rise. We're obviously not going to spend all of it because we are doing money ball. 230k in wage budget as well. In terms of our finances, yeah, Champions League money hits different. Let's get into season five signings. We did end up selling our superstar striker, Luca Hollander. He left to VFL Wolfsburg for £4 million and was loaned straight back out to Brazil. It would have been great to keep him, especially as our other striker, Yassine Fortune, has also left. Now, he was a backup, and he hasn't been great the last few seasons, but it does mean officially we've got no strikers. So it's time to spend some money, and we do spend some money. Overall, £18 million, and the first sign it was Angel Robles, a Mexican striker, for £5.5 million. Now, this is the season where I realised there was the only four non-EU spots. Before this, I hadn't run into this issue. So, yeah... Apologies, we might make a bit of a waste of some money here. First of all, Angel Robles is actually a fantastic striker and is certainly going to make the four. Great finishing, great composure and great pace and is extremely consistent. Oscar Peterson comes in, a Swedish winger. He was an absolute bargain signed from AFK Gothenburg. He loves big batches and he's consistent. Jonas Ferguson comes in, a Norwegian central defensive midfielder. Extremely consistent. Doesn't like big matches, but at just 24 years of age. Signs from Stongerset in Norway. I think he could be brilliant. Novak Mikovic. I decided a superstar goalkeeper was needed. Gabriel Javan, a very good season last season for sure. But we had £40 million. And it didn't make sense to not improve this position. Only £3 million spent. Novak Mikovic looks absolutely brilliant. And if we actually compare the two of them, you can sort of see why I've done it. I mean, he's outrageously better. Obviously, Gabriel Javan, we are not going to be looking to sort of stump his development at all. He is now valuable for the second team. And hopefully, I mean, not hopefully, but I imagine what will happen is in a couple of seasons, Novak Mikovic will end up leaving the club and Gabriel Javan will get better and he'll become a number one again. But that is a brand new goalkeeper in the books. Bogdan Milicetjevic has come in from Partizan, a fantastic young Serbian right winger who has seven caps at 21 years of age. Great speed, great dribbling, great crossing and great agility. Valigir Flickvason has come in from Iceland as well. Signed from BK Hakan. So he's not coming from Iceland. He is from Iceland. Extremely consistent and very similar to Alexandru Pantea. Can play right back and left back. So two very versatile fullbacks. And finally, Mikael Hule has come in, a Swiss left back who has just one cap over there. Looks about 12 in his picture. He is 26. He's consistent. He likes big matches and smashed it over at Stad Luzen Uschi over in Switzerland and is just a left back, but very good going forward. And he does actually come in to the team as our starting left back with Pantea at right back. Lekovic and Langas at centre back with Mikovic in goal. Felgerson and Radzlevescu in DM. Miraketic, Jorge Koman as our free in behind Antonio Robles. Jivan Fredrickson, Ingenzia, Chirishez, Vele, Suit, Sandu, Gladyashev, Opria, Peterson, and Atudere. And there might be some players in here which are regens which have come through the academy, like Atudere, five star potential. Opreya, five star potential. Sandu, four star potential. Vale, five star potential. Left back. It is a wonder kid regen farm here, which is absolutely brilliant. And it's sort of why we also decided to manage them because it's great fun just getting regions through the club. We are loving life here at FCSB. Hopefully we can become back to back to back champions here in Romania. Well, sadly, we're not retaining our trophy in the Romanian Cup. We got semi final by Farrell Constania, and somehow we managed to scrape through the league phase of the Champions League again. Back in 23rd place, it's our famous position. Three wins, this time against Marseille, PSV, and Ludogrets. We drew to Young Boys, and we lost four games against Inter, Manchester United. Uh, Atletico Madrid and somehow a 4-1 against Stuttgart. Then we're in the knockout playoff round again. And, uh, yeah, Bayern Munich, we lost 5-1 overall. They're quite good. And uh, this sort of has given me a big showing of what is still to come. We are a very good side. We are dominating Romania. We can get lucky in the, you know, the over eight games, somehow win three games and sneak in to the league phase. But playing up against big teams and winning the Champions League 
is a long way off. A 5 1 in aggregate, and we got absolutely battered. As mentioned, we do win the league here in Romania again. 73 points, a very impressive season indeed. Uh, back into the Champions playoffs, we did win it by only one point against CFR Cluj, but lucky to win it. And there was actually a team in the relegation group, Farrell Constantania, who ended up winning the actual Romanian Cup. So they're in the Conference League down there. And in the Champions playoff, we've got four teams, and the league is now up to 15th. We're above the championship. We have actually made massive strides for Romanian football, which is absolutely class. In terms of the squad, we did have a very good season. Angel Robles was incredible. 37 goals and 20 assists. 57 goal contributions. Yes, 57 in 47 starts. He is already wanted by a whole host of clubs. Toulouse and Al Batan. He looks absolutely fantastic. Hopefully we can keep hold of him, but we might not be able to. Florio Coman is now 30 years of age and has been fantastic throughout the rebuild. 18 goals and 6 to 6. Bogdan Murietic are signing this season 15 and 12. With Alexandra Oprea, the 20-year-old Cam, 12 goals and 6 to 6. Actually overtaking Antonio Jorge in game time. Both of them a very similar ability, but Jorge, four goals, five assists, didn't even come close to how good Alexandre was. A 7.25 in average rating. He was absolutely brilliant, and it's the first time we've seen him in this rebuild. And again, his stats don't look fantastic, but as I say, always in Moneyball, sometimes it's not about the stats, it's how they perform on the pitch. And this guy was absolutely fantastic. Our new goalkeeper, Mikovic, 6.97, 41 games was very good. Gabriel Javan come in for 17 of them because of injuries, and actually dropped a seven average rating so he is looking very good and is progressing at a very fast rate in terms of money another 30 million pounds to spend now as mentioned i'm trying to be as realistic as i can with money ball last season we spent 19 million only brought in 900k season for that we brought in 12 and a half sold uh signed 8.5 season for that around the same we, we are floating in above but at a position where now we're actually getting this champions league money if we are to compete with the likes of Bayern munich we are going to have to spend more than we sell that is just a simple fact of it. And as mentioned, it is quite unrealistic. A team which has won the league three years in a row, which is now the 15th best league in the world, which is now getting to the knockout playoff round of the Champions League in back-to-back -back seasons and won a conference league in the last four years. Our value is still only the best player at 7.6 million pounds. So it's a bit of a bug in FM where you can't fully immerse yourself, but you have to trust me. That is what it is, sadly. Let's get in to our signings for season six. Right, well, actually, some pretty big sales this summer. Angel Robles, after 57 goal contributions last season, is off to Saudi. Uh, of course he is. I mean, they always do. He's now got a value of £22 million and is going to go and smash it over there. Matiza Stejpanovic has left to Schalke, which is a big move for him. Sadly, he has also gone for around £6 million. And Siobongia Engunzenia, who has been here from the very start. We have sold to Niort, I believe, over in France. This guy has been absolutely fantastic, an absolute stalwart in defence. £1.6 million he's been sold for. A great rotation option that if you are doing an FCSB stave, Make sure to use this guy. But it was time to make some signings. So number one, we brought in Romeo Bene from FC Basel. Now this did cost us 8.5 million pounds. He's the first player that's actually got a very good value here at FCSB. 22 million. He's extremely consistent. Very similar stats to us to Angel Robles. But we reinvested the money. And so far, we've played one game in the league already. He may have bagged a hat trick. He is going to be quite good. Seven caps for Switzerland already and a goal. Charlie Anouk comes in as well from Odell Bense. Eight million pounds. Great determination. Great speed. Consistent and loves big matches. 24 years of age. Could be fantastic. And another big signing in Alivian Hajari has come in from Lugano for seven and a half million pounds. This guy is incredibly consistent. Loves big matches and has some great overall stats. Sohin Kalian Slogliu has been signed from Gostiep from turkey he is now 23 years of age incredibly consistent and his stats are so well rounded great natural fitness as well so could be an absolute demon in the midfield and finally two free agent signings number one being andre duarte a three star 30 year old center backs coming in to replace Mbenzia, who has left and vanis Sorlis has come in to be a superstar for us a central attack midfielder released from over in greece asterios tribopolis he is 25 years of age consistent likes the matches and again so so well rounded and improves the quality of this team ahead of a lot but i'm being a little biased and putting george in that cam roll mitrovic is still in goal pantea lekovic langas and guele felgerson and sahin kaznyloglu in 
DM with Miracetovic, Gijorje, Coman and Romeo Benny up front. We are developing as a club. As mentioned, it is now quite difficult to stick to this money ball unless the league finally catches up in terms of money. We are finally favourites for the league as well, which I believe is the first time this has happened. So it's good to see we are finally being seen. We've even got three players in the media dream 11. Bene, Solius and Frinkovan. Hopefully, we can have a very good season and even get the Romanian Cup back to FCSB. And I do want to say as well, this save is available on Patreon for anyone that wants to help support the channel in any way for £5 a month. You first of all help support me massively and make all this content dream come true. It's the point where we're able to now hire editor, which is absolutely fantastic. It makes my life so much easier. It means I can get the content out to you and get back to the content every other day, which is absolutely brilliant. You also get for that in terms of the perks, you get the save files as well from these rebuilds. So at any point, if you want to pick up from this FCS, be safe that is all over on patreon you can play from where i have set off in this save in particular which is absolutely brilliant because you guys can get your next fm24 save the legends that have been running down the screen have been supporting on patreon and you guys are absolute legends if you want to join that list and get your name on the screen make sure to click the link down below and support the kempi army so the first order of business as mentioned was to get the romanian cup back to ourselves at fcsb and we are facing up against Cluj, and you know what? I think it's time to absolutely batter these. A goal there from Sulius in 34 minutes before the 70th minute. The ball's bouncing about, and Romeo Benny shows his class to make it 2 0 in the 82nd minute. We're going to go and make it 3 0. A ball is attempted to be cleared. Benny finds it. Antonio Jorge is somehow on side. He makes it 3 0. The flares are going off. Everyone's going mental. The 92nd minute, we're going to let Cluj have the last laugh. Akita fires a goal from a range, and it's for a 3 1. Not the last half, actually, because we want 4 1. 94th minute, Pantea gets into the box. It drops the suit and an absolute demolition. And back into the league phase, we just about scrape through yet again. This time, a negative 11 goal difference. We may have got absolutely batting a few games. Three games won Basel, Valencia, and Strasbourg all by one goal. The five losses 3 0 against Spurs, 4 0 against Barcelona, 4 2 against Monaco, 3 0 against PSG, and 2 0 against Atletico Madrid. A much more difficult season this year. But you know what? We're still throwing the knockout playoff round. Where, yeah, we, we we are we are so far away from winning this Champions League, aren't we? We lost 8-1 to Newcastle over the two legs. Um, this could take quite a long time. Three goals from Josh Xerxes, two from Loren, and one from Jeremy Pino. I mean, at least we're getting here. We are still winning the Champions playoff time and time again. 49 points, one point clear of CFR Cluj and obviously the dominant side in Romania. But I'm not quite sure that's good enough. There is a long way to go until we finally make ourselves champions of Europe. Hopefully we can do it within 10 seasons. That is always the goal. Remind us to get yourself your comments down below on where you think it is going to be. In terms of our superstars this season, we're going to make it quite quick. Benny, nowhere near as good as Rob Lez. 28 goal contributions. Rubbish. Obviously, that is a joke. Still fantastic. Florian Coman from the start has been brilliant. 13 and 16. Valka Frinkerson from wing back. 11 goals, 13 assists. Sorius as our free agent signing. 11 and 5. And Antonio Jorge now 20 years of age. 10 and 3. Let's get in to season 7. Caden Clark has left to Sheffield United for 3.5 million. And Novak Minkovic has left to Schalke as well for 4 million pounds. As well as that free agent superstar Cam leaving to Al Faisley. Absolutely gutted. 2.9 million, already a value of 31. I feel like we've been absolutely robbed. So it's time to try and replace him. And we have signed a brand new striker. Francho Ivanovic can play in the cam, both wings and up front. And is a fantastic striker. Signed from Rekia for 5.5 million. Max Norman Williamson, one of my favourite Moneyball signings, has come in from Norway, from Christiansund. Very good in big matches and very consistent. And is always someone that comes up, again, around £5 million. Pounds. Isaac Allberg, a new centre-back, also from Norway 3.3 million pounds very consistent love big matches and you can see we really are going for that non EU vibe We've also signed Lucas Bergvall's brother Theo Bergvall as a superstar right back he's coming to be a right a backup and he looks absolutely brilliant very consistent love big matches and it's got a bit of a busted lip as well. Marco Tadic comes in as another striker, a Montenegrin international, great finishing and composure with some great speed and is six foot four 
and incredibly consistent could be a bit of a bargain find. Velts Vali Igeli has come in as a backup left back, extremely consistent, loves big matches and looks brilliant. Binion 4 Willemsen comes in as an Icelandic striker as well, consistent, likes big matches, great finishing, composure and speed. And finally, Kevin Castaño comes in, released from Krasnodar, a Colombian international, extremely consistent, loves big matches. Now there was three strikers signed there and that's because one of them is actually going to go out onto the wing positions and be a backup to Miracetiewicz. So Jivan in goal, Fridrikson at right back, Norman Williamson, Alberg and Vala Egyeli as the back four, Felkerson and Castano in DM, Miracetiewicz, Giorgi, Benny as the back three behind Tadic. Benny, due to not getting 47 goal contributions, has been demoted to left wing. But I think he's going to be very good there. Ivanovic is also that backup rotation option in Cam and the two wing spots. Nuke and Willemsen as well. Potatia, Kasniloglu, Suit, Vele, Duarte, Hajaji, Bergval, and Gennaru. Oh, a very strong side. A lot of players which have very difficult names to pronounce, but we are getting there. And I think we're doing well with these many more rebuilds to keep up the pronunciations. Still predicts to be favourites. Again, getting some a lot more players in this sort of best 11. Now, we had three last season. We're up to six this season. We really are becoming the dominant force in this league. And I will say on this league as well, it's up to 13th ahead of the Greek Super League, the Cinch League. I mean, that's the Scottish League, the Swiss Super League. We are just behind as well as the Austrian and the Danish. So we are are doing bits i'm very very proud of actually making a league better and in terms of finances well we've not touched on this too much they're looking great 38 million pounds in the bank and that's with spending a fair amount of money on transfers as well and not really bringing much in because it's impossible but it is what it is can we win the league again and possibly get past knockout playoff round in season seven well we won the romanian cup again against cfr cluj in the final a nice one nil victory and i've not really mentioned it too much but the romanian super cup we have won every single season since 2026 it is now 2030 and we won this one 2-1 against cluj yet again in the league phase we improved up to 21st no longer 23rd 24th still a negative goal difference three victories against san sebastian stuttgart and salzburg we drew to olympiacos and we lost to psg liverpool monaco and juventus but was it going to be the same knockout playoff round story? Yes, but there is a big but. We finally didn't lose by more than six or seven goals. A 4-1 loss to Arsenal. I actually think that is quite a good result. Arsenal, a very strong side on foot manager and always make it very big time. They are champions of the English Premier League. How many times they won it in the past in terms of the past winners? Twice in the last three years. We've only lost 4-1. And they are potentially one of the best teams in the world. So I think we've actually done absolute wonders there in the Champions League. They didn't win the final. That was Manchester City beating Fiorentina, who, remember, we faced up against in the Europa League. So we were actually doing quite well. We won the league yet again, which is fantastic. 53 points, massively clear of everyone else. But we just need to try and win that Champions League. I'm probably not going to concentrate too much on anything else anymore because it's getting to a point where I'm saying the same thing every single season. Antonio Jorge was fantastic, 17 and 10. Benny, 16 and 10. Izjanovic, 15 and 6. Charlie Luke, 11 and 4. Maria Tetrovic, 8 and 13. And Theo Bergval, 9 and 9. I've never seen this guy turn into this good of a right back. He's absolutely brilliant and I'm a massive fan. So things are going well. Gabriel Javan, our new goalkeeper, 54 games, 6.9 too very well rounded very very happy we just need to win this champions league I i'm getting bored of saying it now 45 million pounds in the bank 118,000 pounds in wage budget this is the sort of point where normally we just say you know what let's go for it so we brought in three players that i know are gonna be good enough number one vladislav vanya we have won a champions league from before at fc copenhagen can he lead us to a second 28 years of age and actually released from Dynamo Kiev? So a three agent signing for a superstar Champions League winning worthy striker. Jakub Anderson comes in as our right back slash centre back from AAB over in Denmark. Great marking, great defensively, and loves big matches, and extremely consistent. And finally, Sebastian Kosa, a Slovakian centre-back who, again, loves big matches, incredibly consistent, great jump and reach and heading, and can hopefully be very good from corners for us. That were the only signings I made, but I made zero sales. 
We have improved the team in three positions and made the squad very strong. We finally have a striker I trust. We have Benny on the left wing, Mira Tetchevich on the right wing, and our wonder kid from the very start, Antonio Jorge in cam. Castaño and Felkerson in DM. Egyeli, Alberg, Williamson, Anderson, and Jivan in goal. This team can do it. So first of all, the Romanian Cup, a 4-0 victory over FC Rapid. We were absolutely dominant. We were also dominant in the league as well, winning this yet again. So hopefully, we are now going to be concentrating all of our eggs into that Champions League basket. Well, in the league phase, we had a much better season. 13th, ahead of the likes of Tottenham Hotspur, Manchester City, last season's Champions League winners, Dortmund, Porto, Leipzig, just behind Manchester United, Milan, Bayern, and Atletico Madrid, and one point away from getting in to the top eight. In terms of victories, we beat Kiev, Juventus, Fenerbahce, and Midtjylland, drew to Porto, Man City, and Leipzig, and only lost 6-2 to Arsenal, who obviously we got knocked out to last season, and they won the league phase this time around. Knockout playoff round, let's get past it. Well, we finally got quite a nice draw. Not Newcastle, not Arsenal, not Bayern Munich, Benfica. And we beat them 5-2 on aggregate. Finally, we're into the round of 16. And we faced up against Barcelona. And in the 92nd minute at home, Vladislav Vanya made us 1-0 leaders. Which is all we needed because we drew 0-0 away at the new Camp. And that wonder kid goalkeeper, Gabriel Jivan, got player of the match quarterfinals. It's into Milan who stand in our way. Serial winners of the Italian Cup and the obviously the Italian Serie A. And we go 1-0 down thanks to Marlon Gomez in three minutes. 14 minutes on the clock. Ivanovic finds Igvil on the left-hand side to find Ivanovic again to make it 1-1. Pronunciations are difficult. DeMarco finds the round. Back to DeMarco. Back to Marlon Gomez, who's going to get a second in this game and make it 2-1 to Inter Milan. And they're actually going to make it 3-1. Alise down this right-hand side of a great touch. Find Edison to find DeMarco with a long-range screamer. Can we get a goal back to take it back to Romania and give us a chance? Yes, we can. Castagno finds Igili down the left-hand side and he fires it past Erkan. So back at the Romanian National Stadium, Vladislav Vanyak gets us up 14 minutes in before the 97th minute, Charlie Inchuk drives past the whole Inter Milan team and scores. 97 minutes on the clock. We win 4-3 on aggregate. Pure drama. Pure darts. Pure drama. 46% possession, 15 shots apiece. A fairly even game. We actually deserve to beat Inter Milan in this game. And we are through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. Thanks to, first of all, a 1-0 victory over two legs against Bayern Munich. Uh, Barcelona, sorry. And this time, a 97th minute goal from Charlie Enouk. Is it the time we go on a historical run? Well, in the semi-finals, it was up against Manchester United. And I mean, as a United fan, we love to bottle things. So let's go and beat them as well. Anouk get us 1-0 up in 33 minutes at Old Trafford before a cracking free kick from Vardy Aguil to make it 2-0. Mason Mount scores a goal from the spot to make it 2-1. And United complete the comeback thanks to a Mason Mount corner. It drops to Lenny Yoro, back to Mason Mount and Jaden Sancho. Jaden Sancho is there to make it to all. What sort of world is this? Well, it's a world where FCSB could make a Champions League final because in 13 minutes, Miroshetovic makes it 1-0 and we are currently leading the tie. 26 minutes on the clock, Luka Nets finds Marcus Rashford. He drives into the box, finds Rasmus Hoyland to make it 1-0. Things are all tied up. But in the 58th minute, Anderson down the right-hand side beats his man, finds him onto the box, and Inovic heads it onto the post, and Picure is there to make it 2-1. Razvan Picciaru, who I believe is a regen come through the academy at 19 years of age, is a one-and-a-half star slash two-star player. He scores in the semi-finals of the Champions League to get us in to the final. We're facing up against Chelsea, where I fully believed there was a chance we could win this. So in 77th minute, when Charlie and Chuk made us 1-0 leaders, I stopped believing and I started seeing. FCSB 
are champions of the Champions League in season number eight. Now, this season, I will go through the stats of every game. If people want me to, to say they don't believe we've done this fully legit. First of all, the final. Look at this game. We battled Chelsea two for now, pretty much completely even throughout the whole thing. Basically 50-50 in possession. We had more shots. They had more on target. XG was basically even as well. And we went out 1-0 winners. A 97th minute goal to scrape us past into Milan, which is absolutely fantastic for that story. A 1-0 victory over Barcelona over two legs. And against Manchester United, what we saw in the first leg, two goals up. We ended up bottling it, but we showed we were the better team in that second leg. I cannot believe... We have done that because, honestly, this has been an absolute slog from start to finish to get this team to even competing properly. And uh, finally, we have done it. Last season, as mentioned, we faced up against probably the best team in the world on their day, Arsenal, and lost 4-1 in the knockout playoff round. We improved, signing three massive players. And there's a guy which I've spoken about many times before in these Moneyball rebuilds, Vladislav Vanya. He is genuinely one of my favourite players and foot manager of all time. And a uh, just from this year. I've never heard of him until that Copenhagen Moneyball rebuild where he, we signed him like season two and he won us the Champions League there as well. He has just won it for us here at FCSB and goes down as at this point, a channel legend. A bit like Zealand has his channel gods. Vladislav Vanya is a Kempi Army legend. 22 goals and two assists in 47 games. 17 finishing. This guy, genuinely, if you've never used him before, is Un, unexplainable in the match engine. He has shoots of power as a trait. He is simply fantastic. And I'm about to have to get myself a Vladislav Vanya shirt. He's an absolute legend at this point. In terms of the rest of the team, Romeo Benny scored 22. We do have to touch on a couple of players though. Antonio Jorge. We got him through the academy at the very start. He has stayed with the club the whole time. Seven caps for Romania. Just 22 years of age. 15 finishing, 15 composure. A little bit too slow to be a striker. But as a central attacker, midfielder has all the necessary stats to be an absolute hero and has been great for us in every single season the last two 7.21 and 7.13 he had a 7.13 back in 2025 and a 7 in 2026 he has been absolutely brilliant Razvan and Pakariu who I believe scored that 97th minute goal stats don't look great Eight goals, three assists in 19 games for 7.08 average rating, showing it again why the money will approach actually does work. This guy's got a value of 24k, but he's performing in the match engine. And I say it time and time again when doing these rebuilds. Signing players that perform in the match engine genuinely works on a football manager. If they are playing well in a smaller down division, actually try them and give them a chance in your saves because I don't know how it works, but it works so well. And finally, Gabriel Givan, 21 years of age. This season, 60 games because of the just 46 goals. Absolutely fantastic goalkeeper. And it has been very good for us when needed. When we've had seasons where he's needed to play, he's been brilliant. This season, a level above the rest. A 7.1 in average rating. 39 games, 24 goals conceded. Absolutely fantastic. This might be my favorite Moneyball rebuild just yet because of how well we could develop the youth and how much game time we could give them. Club info wise, still great in terms of youth recruitment. We've actually improved the reputation up to four star and training facilities up to four star as well. And finances wise, there's now 110 million pounds in the bank and 77 million pounds in transfer budget. So if you want to go absolutely wild and sign loads of fantastic players, you can. Obviously, I've been using the Moneyball approach throughout this whole time, as you can see from the TC. Well, where is it? The the, uh, the money ball review, the FM20 SS thing. It is so difficult to do this in lower down leagues, but it does genuinely work wherever you go. In terms of this, we are looking at specifically centre backs here, but in the world, there is 332 players that could potentially come to us. In terms of transfer value, you can see there's a few players here which are quite good, but the majority of people that want to come to Romania are not the best of players, and it makes it very difficult, especially with the uh, registration rules being a maximum of four in the non EU. A very difficult rebuild, but it has been so fun. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're liking, subscribing to the channel, and I'll speak to you next time.